Hey guys, I'm Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to our channel and welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream House Build. Before we get started on today's video, we have a huge announcement for you. We've partnered with Bunker Branding to take care of all our merch. We tried to do it ourselves, but we simply couldn't keep up. Check this out. I'm sporting a new military green Stud Pack tee. Jordan's got on the original Stud Pack black tee. These are the caps. They have a lot of different colors, other designs, plus hoodies just in time for the cooler months that are hitting us right now. These things feel great and they look great. And honestly, I can't wait to put these on in the morning and head on over to work. So check out BunkerBranding.com. Let those guys know that maybe it wasn't such a bad idea partnering with Stud Pack. Support the build, support the boys. Now let's get into today's video. All right, guys, in our last video, you saw Jimmy and his crew here knock out the remaining part of the rough plumbing. And just when they were about done, this fitting right here, when they put some air pressure on it, blew apart right where my finger is. Call it a factory defect, who knows? But they repaired it and we tested it and we're good to go. But we're really fortunate it happened then instead of two or three years from now, and it would have flooded the Stud Pack Dream Garage with raw sewage and that would not have been a good day. A lot of you pointed out this daylight coming through right here. That is a gap. We're gonna take care of that. We've got some liquid flash and we're actually gonna liquid flash the whole edge on the outside of the building where the zip is hitting the sill plate. And yes, there's that little hole upstairs where the reciprocating saw punctured the zip, but a little piece of tape and we'll be good to go. Now the plumbing is 99.9% .9 done. What is that remaining 0.1%? It's the hose bibs. So Jordan and I are actually gonna install those today, but not just any old hose bib. We have the Lamborghini of hose bibs. It is the Aquar Water Systems House Hydrant, and we're using the Black Edition, the V2 Plus. All right, guys, what makes this Aquar Hydrant so cool? Well, the first thing is they actually started out in the marine industry making these for yachts and sailboats for washdown hoses on board yachts. It works so well, they brought it over to the residential market. And I love this because it's made of stainless steel. It has seven times the freeze protection factor over brass. And what does every home in America have on their hose bibs? They're made of brass. So let's look at the front of the faucet. This is where your hose connects and this is the vacuum breaker. And it's also the drain where water is going to drain out of the fixture so this doesn't have water in it during a freeze event. Vacuum breaker is really important to protect the water supply and your water main that you get from your utility. This is the same thing that the plumber puts on your hose bib with a set screw that leaks and then gets you wet whenever you take off your hose. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, gang. This thing has a ton of features. So I say we usher this hose bib into the modern era. All right, guys, before we enter the modern era of hose bibs, we have to come over here in this little corner and remove the century old technology of the old hose bibs. Just need a few tools. We're gonna to take this all apart. All right, we're on the back porch. Remember, our garage is not connected to the city water supply yet. So our plumbers use this hose bib to back feed the building and pressurize the system so we could get our plumbing inspection. So we're gonna remove all this. Got my good old Schick aluminum pipe wrench. Check that out. I'm just gonna back off this half inch galvanized nipple. It's screwed into a drop ear 90 on the other side. Should come right out. There we go. Boom. Here, let's get rid of this stuff, dude. That's the past. We're in the future now. All right, now we're gonna remove this drop ear 90. And remember, for all you plumbers out there, Jimmy just did this temporarily knowing we were gonna remove it all. That's why I use drywall screws and this drop ear 90 to make that turn. And that's it. All right, our next step is to cut this right here, get rid of this old drop ear 90. And then the next step is start drilling our holes in our building for our new Aquar Hydrant. Now it's time to drill our holes through the building, just like this template. We're gonna show you this a little bit later and why that's important. But we can't just drill straight through. We have to actually drill at an angle because of a design feature of this hydrant that makes it really important so this thing doesn't freeze. It actually installs in the building at an angle. This is where the stop is. Let me pull this off and I'm gonna show you. And what I mean by the stop, that's actually where your valve is. I'm gonna activate the hydrant and watch the end. So now your water's coming in here into this tube and when I pull this out, a spring and water pressure is gonna shut it off. So any water that's in here is gonna drain out right here because when you put this in a wall, it's pretty cold out here in the winter time, right? Remember this old guy? Check it out. We all know that this is full of water and it's full of water up to about right here because the washer that shuts off the flow of water is way back here. So this is full of water and all this is full of water. 
That's why we put those foam things on them in the wintertime. And if you can't find those, that's why you're getting beach towels, wrapping them up and leaving them on all year until you need the faucet. So that's the key feature of this one. It drains out. In order to drain out, it has to be at an angle. We actually measured it, it's four degrees. And why is that important to us? Because we need to drill a four degree hole straight up. Straight up. Straight up. And we've got two holes to drill. They want to see an inch and a half hole here and then centered on it, an inch and a half above it, another inch and a half hole here. So they want two inch and a half holes to make an oval an inch and a half apart center to center. So bear with me as I explain my little jig here. So I made a jig that's going to guarantee you a perfect result if you're doing this yourself. So I already have a hole here from the old hose bib. So if you're retrofitting one of these, this is a great tip. But I can not enlarge that hole with a standard hole saw because the pilot bit has nowhere to pilot the bit. It's just gonna walk all around. So we've shown this trick a bunch on the channel. We made a board like this. We're gonna center it over that hole. And now this hole will guide the hole saw and make a clean hole around this one. What's the little hole for? That's for my big long 12 inch bit right here. We're gonna attach this to the building, put it there. Remember that four degrees I was talking about? We put a four degree cut on this piece of zip. I'm gonna put it like that. Boom, come down to four degrees. I can eyeball 90 this way, but if I can't, that's a 90. I can hold it up right there, 90 degrees, four degrees, and I can drill through the exterior of my building, through that stud on the interior wall, pull this out, replace it with the hole saw, then the pilot bit on the hole saw follows the hole left by this guy and guarantees us a perfect route for our new hydrant. And that's exactly what we're about to do. So let's show you how to drill these perfect holes through the exterior wall of our building. So I'm gonna screw the template to the building so it doesn't walk around on me. And then those screw holes are gonna be concealed by the stainless steel flange that comes with our hose bib. We're also gonna show you that here in just a minute. Well, I was gonna do the hole saw first and show you, but I already got this one in the drill. So why don't we drill the little guy? Put that guide right there. What, hap what happens if you don't drill it at four degrees? This won't sit tight to the building. If it goes straight, you're gonna have a gap here. And there's actually a wedge that fits in there on the cover. They've got it all designed in there, it's really cool. Can you see that bit coming out at an angle? Yeah. That's exactly what we want. How we look, bud? Great. Yeah, I'm good, I'm going for it. Nice. All right, I've got my inch and a half spider bit chucked in my drill. Let's do this bottom one first. Now we'll do the top one. And remember, this pilot bit is quarter inch, the same as this one. It's gonna follow the hole this guy made. I can go anywhere I want, depending on where I drill the guide hole. Did I put that screw too low? I'm good. Here we go. <laughs> All right, now when I stick this hole saw through, it should follow my angle and the pilot bit should go right in that other hole. I felt it. How do you look, Jordan? Great. All right, here we go. Oh no. Can you grab it? Yeah, I can stop it. All right, there you go. How'd that cool. even come out of the drill? Well, it wasn't in the drill. This is a trick I had to pull out of my remodeler for 20 years back. But first, let me show you how easy it is to get those plugs off of this spider bit. You've all seen it, but I love showing that every time. Love these things. So a lot of times when you're remodeling, you have to drill a hole deeper than the arbor of the hole saw will allow. So I actually have three extensions, but guess what? None of these fit this hole saw. I made this one work because I was able to tighten down that set screw enough on this flat and make it work. But before I had any of those, this was my setup. Everybody has a socket set. This just happens to be 10 millimeter, 10 mil socket, 3 8 drive, 3 8 extension, whatever you want. You can put three of those together, drill a hole three foot deep. Then all you need is an adapter, hex by socket. Let me pull that out just like that to drive it. They make these in quarter. This is three eighths and also have one for half. The main problem with this setup is getting it out. When you start to pull it out, it's gonna fall out just like it did before. So I used to tape that, but that was sketchy. And so that's, <laughs> so that's why we're building a new house where we can just go around and grab the bit. All right, let's pull this off of here, cut our zip 
into this nice oval shape and we are ready for install. <laughs> You know what I was thinking about last night, bud? What? What month are we in? October. And what did we always do as a family at the end of October when y'all were kids? Trick or treat. And what did we do to a certain orange vegetable? Carve pumpkins. Wouldn't this have been awesome when you were a kid to carve pumpkins? Hey, we still got plenty of plenty of time. <laughs> we can because do that. y'all would always pick out the most complicated scheme. I told you no. I'm just doing triangles. I, I wonder where we got that from. Yeah, I have no clue. Probably your. <laughs> but this would have been a great pumpkin carving tool. All right, enough about that. Let's start putting in our Aquor faucet. All right guys, we're almost ready to install our Aquor hydrant, but it's worth noting right now that if you're doing a retrofit, obviously this is new construction, but if you've got your own house and you wanna to upgrade to this system, it's really easy to do. When we decided to order our system, we actually sent them pictures of the inside of our building and they custom made this kit for us. For example, this hydrant comes in many different lengths, anywhere from two to I think 12 inches in two inch increments for your application and also different finishes. Which one is this, Jordan? The black or matte black, matte black yeah. cool? And then this is the mounting plate. Again, different configurations, different depths, masonry, stucco, wood siding, and they even make a solid teak block. And you can paint the teak or leave it natural because teak is a beautiful wood. And I would imagine that the teak is a holdover from this company's starting days when they made these for boats and custom sailboats. Yeah, I think you're and right. Yachts, yeah. So my first instinct is to mount this on the building and then screw this on there with the cover. But I think what I'd rather do is put it all together right here mm. and then slide it in the building into that angled hole, put it in the building with the four screws, top and bottom, and we're good to go. What yeah. do you think, bud? I all like right. that. So here's the cover plate, really cool. Just imagine what that's gonna look like on the outside of the building. Yeah. If I came up to a building and saw that, you know what I would think is behind there? An outlet. An outlet, yeah. of course. Not a hose bed, right? That's the last thing I would think of. All right, let's assemble this and we'll put it on the wall. All right, guys, here's the magic. If I just put that in there like that, this is gonna be squared in my building and that won't drain. But check out the taper on the cover. It's gonna slide behind there. I'm sure I do this with one hand. And now I put it on, now look at that. Now look at the angle of this thing. That's our four degrees we were talking about. Snap that closed, beautiful. We're gonna leave this plastic protective cover on probably till the day you move in, Jordan, right? <laughs> Protect it from paint and yeah. everything else. Look how great that looks. So Ooh. let's put these four screws in then we'll mount the whole thing to the building, hook it up to the water. All right, one left. I'm just getting them a little bit tight. So check this out. See that rubber gasket right there? Yep. Another feature of this thing that I love, keeps all the water out of your building. All right, there we go. Check that out. Got our slope. And one other little detail, this is the kind of stuff I love when manufacturers design something and they build it right. They actually welded a nut on the back to really grab those threads. What? In, instead of tapping this thin metal, they put a nut on there. It's never gonna strip. Wow. All right, let's put it in there. Should go straight onto the building in that hole. There we go, look at that, man. Love it. All right, I see you got my level already. Nice. Yep. We'll put the four screws in it. Go back inside, hook up the water. There, huh? Money. Woo. Nice. That's so cool. It really is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, I've installed, I can tell you how many I put in over my lifetime. And to do that, you just feel like it's, that's the way it's supposed to be, right? And guess what we can do with that flange? Zip tape? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 We could even seal this if we wanted to, right? Lexel or some liquid flash, because remember sure. our siding is going to cover all that completely. Right. But we're under this huge porch. If it ever gets wet, that means we got a lot bigger problems. <laughs> all right, let's go hook this thing up to the water. Turn this thing on, see how it looks. All right, guys, our hydrant is in the wall. We're ready to hook up our water line. We got that perfect four degree angle. We are good to go. Now, normally it might be an easy situation to connect our PEX A to this Fitting, this is half inch female pipe threads in here. Our plumbers actually left us these, a PEX male adapter to screw in here. They even taped it for me. I got Jimmy's a legend, man. Just like that. And then we could bend this around. He left me a service loop way up top. I could pull the slack down, come in at an angle, but Aquor makes it easy. I can go one better. Check this out. This part right here, you saw me remove it earlier. It's removable, right? I'm gonna unscrew it. Be careful that spring's in there, right? There we go. 
I'm going to put that aside. And when we called Aquor about our system, they asked us, what kind of piping do you have? We said PEX-A. So they sent us this really cool PEX-A90. It's got the same female threads as the fitting I just took off. It even comes with the spring inside. So now we can drop straight down with our PEX-A. Very cool. Comes in PEX-B and also comes with half inch pipe thread, just like uh, that. So you can adapt to copper or CPVC or whatever it is you have at your house. And just like everything else from Aquor, this thing is super high quality. Marine grade stainless steel, 316L is gonna last forever. Got the threads inside in our spring. I'm just gonna screw it on here. And what's really cool is I'm gonna bottom it out. See that O-ring right there? This is really important. Check it out. Look at the engineering on this guy. Get that started. There we go. I'm gonna tighten it. All right, I'm, at the, I'm past the O-ring, I can feel it sealing. Now I'm tight, but I'm pointed down almost like seven o'clock from where I am, but I need to be straight up. All you have to do is back it off. Now I'm pointed straight down, I'm at three o'clock. Yes, I'm backing it off, but the O-ring is what's making the seal. If an O-ring is good enough for the space shuttle, it's good enough for our water faucet. All right, for my next step, I could cut it right here, but I think I'm gonna cut it a little lower right here, pull the extra up into the attic space for my service loop, and we'll put it on. And we're done. And we're almost done. <laughs> oh, we're good. Let me put our ring on there. I love this stuff. Oh. So you might have to cut it a little higher because you cut it right at the expansion. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It might be deformed a little right, right there. Okay. Yeah, it is. I can see it. Okay. Nice. Yeah, now you shouldn't have any problems. Yep. Easy. Nice. Good call. All right, guys, got our Milwaukee expander tool for our Upanor collars. Check this out on the end. Looks like something out of Predator, doesn't it? Looks like, it? It looks like Doc Ock's uh, hands. We say Doc Ock a lot on this one. And it's expanding the pipe and the collar. That should yep. be enough. Put it down. You have just a few seconds. I'm bottomed out at the shoulder. It has memory. It's going to go to its original position. Bite down on the grooves on the collar right here and we're watertight. Sick. Cool, dude. We're ready for some water. All right, guys, we are hooked up to city water pressure on our building now, and check it out. If you had any doubts about that O-ring right here, it is bone dry, and so I should be able to spin this. Look at that, see that? I can still spin that, just like I could spin this, and I'm not gonna get any leaks. But here's what's cool. I'm in the electrical closet, and the front hose bib is in the stairway in a similar wall. So we're gonna put a little access panel on this side just in case we ever have to access this fitting and repair it, but I'm sure we never will. Now let's go outside and we're gonna show you how cool it is to hook up the hose. All right guys, we have a little six foot hose hooked up to this Aquor eco-friendly polymer connected. Check out the two O-rings there. See all these grooves? And to turn the hose on and get your water going, there's a little arrow here, one on the other side. Don't know if you can see them on the camera, but that's a visual. Just put the arrow on top, push and turn clockwise. We got full flow on the other end of our hose. Wow. And it's just as simple to stop the water flow, right? I'm just gonna turn counterclockwise, pull it out. There's our water draining out of our body and a little bit more right there. So now if it freezes tonight, which it won't, we're totally protected. Yeah, because it's 90 degrees. It is 90. It was really cool earlier, but it got hot again. Love it. And if you don't like the straight connector, they make an angled one also with or without the ball valve and they come in different colors also. And I can already hear all the comments. Well, I don't want that system because I have a proprietary part to hook up my hose. Well, if that's the case, you must still be using one of these to drive all the screws because you don't want a tool that has a proprietary battery. And you're probably cooking all your meals in the backyard over a bonfire because you don't want an appliance with proprietary parts. And you're probably getting the wood for the bonfire on your horse because you don't want to drive a truck with proprietary parts. So it's kind of interesting. <laughs> But in all seriousness, gang, this is a huge stress reliever for a homeowner. It removes a ton of stress. For one thing, you're not gonna have any leaks. Just yesterday, Jordan was at our house washing his car, had to go turn off the hose bib, which was leaking, not one of these, the old ones, leaking into our muddy flower bed. He got his shoes all muddy, had to take them off before he came into the house with one of these. Wouldn't have been a drop of water on the ground. The other reason is you're gonna remove the stress during the winter time. We've all been there where we open up the app on our phone. We're going to have a hard freeze tonight. So we run to the hardware store to get those foam protectors and they're all out. So we come home, rig something up. And so you go to bed at night, hoping your little hose bib rig keeps it from freezing. So you don't have a huge plumbing expense, right? 
We just moved to Texas about a year ago and we still hear about the freeze from two years ago. There was millions and millions of dollars worth of damage done to broken pipes. So Aquar simply nailed the design of this system. We absolutely love it and we hope we're gonna see them in a lot more homes. So Jordan, I love seeing this on this house. Aquar nailed the design and honestly, bud, I am stoked to see this on your house. You don't even have to worry about freezes ever again. I'm pretty stoked about that. And it looks awesome. All right, guys, so with the installation of our two hose bibs on the exterior of the garage, we are 100% done with the rough plumbing. Super duper excited about that. That's a huge milestone. It is the third week of October here in Texas, and check this out. It is 90 degrees today, but we know in other parts of our country, it's already starting to get cold. If you live up there and you're starting to worry about your hose bibs, now you know at least there's a system that can help you out. So reach out to Aquar and see if they can hook you up with a kit for your house so you're not stressing out during those hard freezes. And as far as the build goes on our garage apartment here, we got a bunch of updates for you and we're getting real close to insulation and drywall. And just those two things there, they're gonna be epic. Can't wait to show you what we've got planned for that. But before we can do the insulation and the drywall, we've gotta finish the electric and we've been waiting on the lighting plan. Jordan had some really crazy ideas about the lighting. We didn't want to do simple fluorescent shop lights in the garage and cans upstairs. We wanted this to be a model for the main house. So the lighting plan on this thing is going to blow your mind. We had it printed yesterday and we were looking at it last night. It is crazy. I can't wait to implement it and show all of you how cool it's going to be. But since it is so cool, it is taking us a little bit longer to pull everything off. Because remember, it's just three of us building this house for the very first time. And if y'all want to continue to help support our build, you can head on over to BunkerBranding.com. Check out our new merch. Absolutely love this stuff. Don't forget, you can find us on Instagram also, at StudPackOfficial. So get you a four degree angle on your like button so it drains and never freezes. Smash it for us. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell if you haven't already. And we'll see you right back here on the very next StudPack video.